got a preacher in the house. Come on, rise to your feet. The preacher is coming up. Clap your hands. I want you to point this way and say, Lord, bless Elder Brown. Give us a word on the day that will bless our soul. Say amen as you come. Come on, put your hands together for a moment. Praise him. We're going to be going to the word, but it's all right to praise him. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We lift you up. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. God, I pray that you let flesh be crucified, get flesh out of the way. Let your anointing take over. God, see your word that heals, that delivers, and that sets free. In the name of Jesus, and we thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We are our pastor in his absence, and to his wife, to Elder Cheers, and to my own wife. And we thank God for being here to save and sanctify filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost and I'm excited about what the Lord is doing in my life. Amen. We're not going to be long on this morning but we just thank God for being here. We thank the Lord for being here on today. Life, health, strength, the activities of all my limbs. I'm clothed in my right mind. Amen. We thank God. We're not going to be long. We're going to the third chapter of Daniel. Third chapter of Daniel. Can I get you all to just pray for me? How many of y'all are here praying for me? Let me see your hand. Don't fool me. All right. All right, we're going to go on to the third chapter of Daniel. Murray, might as well stay right where you're at because we're not going to be long. We're going to take off and see what the Lord has to say on this morning. King Nebuchadnezzar made a golden statue 90 feet high and 9 feet wide and set it up on the plain of Dura and in the province of Babylon. Then he sent for all the leaders of his empire. He set up, you can, go, you can take your seat. He made a golden statue, set it up, called for everybody, come and see what I have done. Then after you get here to see what I've done, I got an activity for you. You're going to bow down, you're going to worship this thing. You're going to bow down, you're going to worship this statue. Just for a thought on this morning, you just want to lose, use for a thought just for a few moments. Look at your name and say, neighbor, neighbor. Lord, Lord, make a way, make a way. In, difficult times. in difficult times. That's my subject for this morning. Lord, make a way. If you allow me just to take this towel off because it's a little warm. Lord, make a way in difficult times. I was going to use, uh, I don't know if I want to use, say sub-subject or second subject, however you want to interpret it. The second subject would be stand your ground. Stand your ground. So Lord, make a way in difficult times and stand your ground. 
I wanted to give you the second one, so when I start preaching and start talking about staying your ground, you'll know I'm still in the same, I'm still in the same vein. Because they both go together. Choir sang, thank you choir for singing them selections. They sang the song talking about how faithful the Lord is. And they sang another one. Say, I can go to the rock. I want to encourage you people of God today that the Lord is faithful. And you can go to the rock. No matter what's going on, the Lord is still in control. Daniel 3 and 6 says, And whosoever falleth not down and worshipeth shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Saints, sometimes we go through things in life and the enemy, we don't do what he wants us to do. He threatens to throw us in the fiery furnace. Anybody here ever been in the fiery furnace? Well, preacher, what do you mean in the fiery furnace? I ain't never been in no fire. Well, we go through some situations that's hot as fire. Real life situations that's hot. Rough to make it through. Hard to make it. But if it wasn't for the Lord that was on our side, Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. So he called them all together, told them that he wanted them to worship this image. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they decided they were going to stand for what they believed, what they knew, the God that they knew. So they told the king, king, I'm just going to kind of summarize this up. Many of you already know the story. King, we're not going to bow. I don't care what kind of threats you throw at me. I'm not going to be able to bow. It don't matter what you take from me. I'm not going to be able to bow. I have to hold on to this God that I know. The real God. The true and living God. I have to hold on to him. So no matter what you throw my way, if you're going to throw me in the furnace, throw me in the furnace. I'm holding on to God. Tell somebody, hold on to God. Hold on to God. We're living in difficult times. Right now, we're living in difficult times. They've taken prayer out of the schools. They took prayer out of the schools. I mean, what do you expect? Things to start going upside down. This day and age we're living in, men are marrying men. Women are marrying women. There's no respect for authority. No respect for authority at all. We would visit my mother in the hospital last Sunday, as a matter of fact. And we were on the elevator, me, my daughter, and my son. And the elevator was crowded. And there was a boy on there, and he was talking to a lady. And she said, how are you getting home? And uh, said, I'm riding with John. She said, no. Nah. I said, how you get home? I'm riding with John. She said, uh, John is your father. He said, yeah, I know. I'm riding with John. So my son thought it was, he thought it was funny. So he said, uh, I'm riding with Calvin. I said, no, nah, brother, don't even try it. No respect. No respect. I was taking my son and a couple of his friends to a basketball game a couple of days ago. And this is the second time this has happened. The girl that was in the car, they were just talking. I'm just driving. You know, he tried to give me instructions in my car before they get in. He said, I, we don't, I don't want to have no, we don't want to have no strange type conversations. In other words, what he's telling me is when they get in, don't you say nothing. Don't start talking about the Lord. Don't say nothing. You just be quiet. <laughs> so they get in the car. They just are talking. You know, teenagers, they doing, they talking and what have you. But I guess the girl forgot who she was in the car with. So 
So she's sitting in the back seat and she's just a talking and she just slipped up and said some profanity. And I'm thinking to myself, now wait a minute. Now, I'm not prejudiced, but this stuff that these white folks allow their kids to do, it don't fly with us. You know, because the first thing in my mind is, first of all, I'm an adult. You don't, you don't respect me enough to be riding in my car, you're going to slip up and use a curse word in my car? In my ride? No respect for authority. The things that we are dealing with today are a result of people not recognizing the Lord. We have a president elect who was just elected, and he is talking about doing a lot of things. A lot of things. Now, we don't know, only the Lord knows. He may be just talking, or he may not be just talking. But the Lord knows. In the midst of whatever's going on, in the midst of whatever the president-elect says or whatever he does, we need to ask the Lord to make a way in difficult times. Whatever decisions the politicians decide to make, they're making decisions that are going to hurt people. The majority of these politicians, the only thing they care about is getting a dollar. They care about getting the money, putting money in the pocket. They really don't care about the people. I don't care how many uh, stories they tell on these commercials, the majority of it is not true. A lot of these commercials that I've seen throughout this political season, a lot of stuff I know is not true because I'm behind the scenes and I know about a lot of this stuff. And I'm like, they just sitting up here just telling stuff because the actual, the, the regular public really don't know whether it's true or not. We live in a difficult times. People of God, in the midst of the times that we're living in, I want to tell you on this morning that it's very important that you stand your ground. The three Hebrew boys, they stood their ground. Even though they were threatened, to be thrown in the fiery furnace, they stood their ground. Let's go to Daniel, the third chapter, and we're getting ready to get out of here. Third chapter, and the 16th verse. It says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. So no matter what you decide to do, go ahead and throw me in. The God that I serve, he's able. Tell somebody he's able. People of God, I want you to know that he's able. Whatever your storm is, he's able. Whatever your dilemma is, he's able. Whatever your difficulty is, he's able. Let's go to John 3. 24 and 25. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was atoned and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselor, Did not we cast three men abound into the midst of the fire? There's a question mark. The king asked him, Wait a minute, didn't we throw in three? We didn't just throw them in. We threw them in bound up. They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. Yeah, we threw in three. Threw them in bound. 
He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they that have no and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. The fourth is like the Son of God. Four men walking around loose in the midst of a fire. They have no hurt. Jesus is in the fire. And I just stopped by here to tell somebody this morning that Jesus is in your fire. Whatever your situation is, Jesus is in the midst. One thing that I like about this story is Jesus allowed them to go in the fire. Sometimes the Lord allows us to be thrown in the fire. Sometimes we wonder why he allows this. Well, certain situations that he allows us to get in is because what he brings you out. Somebody say, praise the Lord. When he brings you out, you're not going to be able to say you brought yourself out. I won't be able to say it was Calvin. Calvin did this. Or Calvin did that. Jesus is in the midst of the fire. Somebody here today, you've been discouraged. You think you've been all left alone. But I just stopped by here to tell you that Jesus has not left you alone. Sometime when we're driving, when you're driving that car, and I taught my son to drive, and I taught my daughter to drive, and when you're teaching somebody how to drive, you teach them how to look in the mirror. Driving is not all about just looking straight ahead. You got to pay attention to what's on the left. You got to pay attention to what's on the right. You got to look in the mirror and see what's going on behind you. You got to look down the road and see what's going on down the road. But every now and then, I have to ask them a question. Somebody say, what's the question you ask? Ask me, what's the question you ask? The question that I ask them every now and then is have you looked in your blind side? Have you looked to check the blind spot before you get ready to get over? Somebody here this morning, I just came to tell you it's time to check your blind spot. You thought you was all alone. But Jesus, I said, Jesus, he's sitting right there. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Somebody say, praise the Lord. In the midst of difficult times, I need you to understand, to stand your ground. Even in the fire, stand your ground. In the lion's den, stand your ground. Down in the valley, stand your ground. Jesus, he will never leave you nor forsake you. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Point number two. I'm getting ready to get out of here now. The Bible says, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish 
but have everlasting life. Somebody here this morning, you're locked up in sin. Feel you can't get out. But I came to tell you today that God so loved the world that he gave he gave Jesus something about that name Jesus he hung on the cross Jesus he bled and died Jesus yes he did you may be hung up hung up in drugs you may be locked up locked up in sin but Jesus 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 died that you can live say yes say yes Lord somebody here this morning think you can't get free but he was wounded for our transgression he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was put upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Yes, Lord. Can I tell my story? Can I tell my story? Before I got saved, I was hooked. Hooked on marijuana. Smoking blunts. Every day, somebody need to know. I tell these young folk, don't let the devil fool your mind. Marijuana is a drug. Don't y'all look at me funny. Yes, I was. I was hooked on it. Sold my VCR for a $10 bag. Went to the pawn shop. Somebody said, no, that ain't brown. Yes, it was me. Sold my, sold my VCR. Yes, I did. Used to get my mama's car. She would send me to house Chicken. In the midst of going to house Chicken, I would run down here on 55th Street to get me a dime bag of weed. Y'all don't like me, but I'm so glad, so glad that Jesus hung on that cross died for me and I came to tell you today whatever you in God God is able to deliver you yes he is they was in the fire turned up seven times hot but Jesus Jesus said put him on in I am I'm the way I'm the truth I'm the light I'm going in. Don't worry. Hebrew boys. Go on in there. Keep on trusting me. Keep on believing in me. When they throw you in. I say I. I will be in the fire. Don't worry. People of God. To tell you today, hold on, hold on. We've been made and do for a night, but joy, 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 joy will come in the morning. Shout yeah, shout yeah, yeah.
2 Corinthians 7 and 14 if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and and pray and seek my face and turn somebody say turn turn from your wicked ways then will I hear from heaven yes and will I forgive their sins and heal heal the land somebody say Lord help us in difficult times look at your neighbor and say neighbor stand your ground stand your ground stand your ground they stood their ground and standing their ground they got thrown in the fire somebody I need you to know just because you're in the fire does not mean that you have sin just because you're in the fire doesn't mean that the Lord has turned his back on you but I heard said I heard Job said I looked to my left couldn't find I looked to my right I could not find it but after all he knows he knows mother he said he knows sister brown he knows he knows she is when I can't find him all I got to do is wait for the Bible said they that wait upon the Lord I feel like preaching they that wait upon the Lord he shall renew their strength somebody you need strength today all I can tell you is wait on the Lord say yes say yes I feel dancing in my feet say yes Lord wait on the Lord be not weary in well doing saints of God for in due season ye shall reap if you say not say yes Woo! say yes somebody you ready to give up but I came to tell you today hold on stand your ground Stand your ground. I got to get out of here. Point number three. I got to go. Point number three, I got to go. Hallelujah. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. My point number three. In difficult times, stand in your ground. Believe in God that he's going to do just what he said. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Sister Don either. if God said it's coming to pass, say yes. Say yes. My third point, and I got to take my seat, the Bible said, Psalm 150, 
I want to tell you, in the midst of your storm, in the midst of the test, in the midst of the tears, yes, the king, he wanted them to bow down. He told them, I got a band. When the band begins to play, it's your time, time to bow and worship this image. People of God, I stopped by to tell you this morning, I got a band. My band is here. This band, when they play, it's your time to praise the Lord. This band, when they play, it's your time to give him glory. This band, when they play, it's your time to tell him thank you. This band, when they play, it's your time to shout hallelujah. This band, this band, when they play, it's your time to lift your hand. This band, when they play, it's your time to leap for joy. This band, when they play, it's your time to give them glory. This band, when they play, it's your time to tell them thank you. This band, when they play, it's your time to look back over your life and see where the Lord has brought you from. This band, when they play, it's your time to look back over your life and see how God has brought you out. This band, when they play, I feel like preaching. This band, when they pray, it's your time to give them glory, give them honor, give them praise. The Bible says, ah, I got to get out of here. I got to go, I got to go, I got to go. Woo! Woo! This band, are y'all ready? Is my band ready? Is the band ready? I done talked about this band. This band. The Bible said, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in the sanctuary. Praise him in the ferment of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the tremble and dance. Praise him with string instruments and organ. Praise him upon the loud sounding cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Are y'all ready to get with my band? The Bible says, Psalm 150 and six. I believe everybody in this room fits in this category. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Praise ye 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 the Lord. Praise Come on, praise him, praise him, praise him.
Come on, praise him, praise him, praise him. Come on, praise him, praise him, praise him. Glory, glory, glory. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. oh Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Glory, glory, glory. 
Hallelujah. Come on and bless him. Bless him. Bless him. Come on and bless his name. Come on, give him glory today. In the midst of your trouble, give him glory. In the midst of your storm, give him glory. In the midst of the fiery furnace, give him glory. Woo! Yeah, 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 yeah. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Come on and bless him, bless him. Woo! Come on and praise him. He's worthy. He's worthy. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put your hands together and tell the Lord thank you. Come over your mouth and tell the Lord thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We get ready to turn you loose. Before we do, there's two things that I want to do. One is, is there anyone here that want to be saved? Everyone is standing. Everyone is standing. You need to be saved. In order to endure the fiery furnace, you have to have the right person on your side. If you're not saved, you won't endure the fiery furnace. The fire's going to burn you up. But with the right person on your side, Jesus in your life. You can do anything. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You want to be saved on today. You need to be saved. You need to be saved. Come over on the winning team. Come over on the winning team. 
The winning team is with Jesus. That's the winning team. Anybody want to be saved on this morning? Just come on down. Hallelujah. I know you're here. I know you're here. Tonight is not promised to us. I'm not even going to say tomorrow. Tonight is not promised to us. On my job, the last couple of months, there's been a lot of death going on. One man they found dead at his desk at 8.30 in the morning. The only one they found dead because he hadn't come to work, found him dead at his yard. Hallelujah. It's not promised to us. We had a couple more around there. We had so many deaths going on, I tell my wife about it. She said, I don't know what's going on down at the county. I got to get you up out of there. She said, I don't know what's going on down there. I got to get you out. It's not promised to us. You need to be saved. Don't keep coming to church. Let me tell y'all young folks something. Because I used to do this. We were growing up, I used to come to church and I used to shout. I was shouting and dancing. I was a good dancer back in the day. Before I got saved, Mother Rimmer, I was a good dancer. But I wasn't saved. Shouting did not save us, doesn't mean nothing. My mother drug us out to every service. We used to go back down 35th Street. You know, that's why I know just because you're bringing, bringing the kids to church, you got to still watch them. Y'all don't like me now. Because I know what we used to do. We'd be down there on 4021 South State Street at the Bishop Church doing the convocation. And they in there preaching and shouting. And we out there on the front, up and down the block. I know what I'm talking about. You need to be saved. Young people, you need to be saved. Don't waste, don't waste, don't waste. One thing I wish I had have done, I wish I had got saved earlier. It would have, a lot of, some of the things that I went through, I wouldn't have had to go through. I wouldn't have had to go through. I told y'all the story how I was down there at the hotel down there, and they came in and stuck up the hotel. I was in the lobby. The man put the gun to my head. I was not saved. He said, get down on the ground. I laid down on the ground. I looked up. He, his head just like this said no. That was the hand of the Lord. What he was telling me was that was the hand of the Lord that was on my life. And he was telling me, I'm not going to hurt you. If they had to look back at them cameras, they would have thought that I was part of the part of people who set that up. If they had to look at them videos. You need to be saved. Used to go out and party. Yeah, used to go out and party a little bit. Now, I wasn't too different. I'm an early bird now, and I was an early bird then. Even when I was not saved, you can ask my mama, she'll verify all as I was a kid, always went to bed early. We used to go away to camp for three weeks at a time. The counselor called my mother and said, what's wrong with your son? You need to come and get him. She said, what you mean what's wrong with him? She said, he wants to go back to the cabin and go to bed. It was five o'clock. She said, nothing wrong with him. He just like to go to bed early. I've always gone to bed early. Never hung out all night. When y'all get ready to go to the party at 12, I'm ready to come on. I'm just telling me to come on back home. Need to be saved. Hello, somebody. Don't waste your time. And don't let the devil fool you. Don't let him fool you. He's a trickster. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus came that we may have life, and that we may have it more abundantly. Now, after I got saved, that's when my shout became real. 
Mother Rema, after I got saved, there was not a time, and that's why I rejoice so much when I see my daughter, there was not a time after I really truly got saved when I was younger, there was not a time that I had to always sit on the end. Because whenever it was time to give him some praise, I was going to get out there. Like Mother Rim said, I was going to be on every set after I truly got saved. It used to be a time we used to have audition meetings. I ain't off. I'm still talking about getting saved. We used to have audition meetings over at, uh, on, the, on the Superintendent Starks, over at Starks Temple. Them audition meetings, we used to shop 45 minutes straight. Straight. Wasn't getting out to all times of the night. After you get saved, the joy, the joy, the joy of the Lord. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like the joy of the Lord. Is there one on this morning? Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for those that are here. God, those that are not saved, God, we pray that you will give them a mind to be saved. Give them another chance to come to you, God, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Before I turn it over to Ella Cheers, I got one more thing. One more thing. There's somebody here today that has, and don't be scared to come, you have a business idea. You have a business idea. You hear you have a business idea. You have not acted on it. I want you to come right now. You have a business idea. You have not acted on it. I want you to come right now. Come right now. This is what the Lord gave me. This right here, this is what the Lord gave me. You have a business idea, you have not acted right now. I'm going to tell you something. The Lord has anointed me in this area. I'm not telling you what somebody told me. I'm telling you what I know for myself. I have been knowing this since the age of 16, that the Lord has anointed me in the area of entrepreneurship. The Lord has anointed me to raise money. He has done that. He's anointed me to raise money. He's anointed me in the area of business. The Lord told me to call you down here on this morning. We're going to anoint you and I'm going to impart unto you what he has imparted unto me. I want you to go back from this day forward and start moving. Somebody say moving. In the area of your business. The time is now. Cheers. time is now. Now you're going to have to do what it takes. You're going to have to do what it takes. You're going to have to do what it takes to make it happen. The Lord is going to give you let me, let me say this. I am not the smartest guy around. Trust me. I don't care how good I may try to look and dress it up. I am not the smartest guy around. Anything and everything that I have accomplished, it is not because of Calvin Brown. It has all been the Lord. Even in what I'm doing with my business now, I have different things that I struggle in is me that struggle in it. But the Lord has showed me time and time again that as long as you lean on me, you don't have to worry about anything. So I want to tell you whatever your, I don't know if I want to use the word, I don't know if 
low self-esteem. I don't know if that's the proper word to use or whatever your doubts may be, your fears, whatever your fears are. From this day forward, you have to let your fears go. Give it to the Lord and watch him work. God has brought me before great men and he is not done yet. I don't even talk about the things that God has done for me. I got to stop sitting down on it. It's not that I, it's, it's the reason I don't talk about it a lot because I don't want people to think I'm bragging. That's the reason that I don't really talk about it a lot. I don't want people to think that I'm bragging, but it's not about me. It's all about Jesus. I was talking to a brother, the chef, and I was telling him how miles, and I was telling him how good the food was. And the man told me, he said, I am not confused. It's not me. It's the Lord. So I want you all to know I'm not confused. It's not me. It's the Lord. But I know he's anointing me in this area. He's anointing me in the area of business. And he's anointing me to raise money. I have no doubt about it. I'm going to touch and agree with you on this morning. And from this day forward, I want you to go. Somebody say go. go. It's time to go and work your business in the name of Jesus. It's time to go and work your business in the name of Jesus. It's time to go and work your business in the name of Jesus. It's time to go and work your business in the name of Jesus. It's time to go and work your business in the name of Jesus. It's time to go and work your business in the name of Jesus. It's time to go and work your business in the name of Jesus. It's time to go and work your business in the name of Jesus. Come on, put your hands down. Tell the Lord, thank you. Amen. The doors of the church are now open. Is there anyone here that want to come and join this noisy group? This noisy sanctified group. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, daughter. Come on over here. On this way. All right, this is Linda Williams' son. She came here for a funeral. She's been here a few times, and she wants to make this her church home. Amen. Amen. So we're going to accept her here today with the right hand of fellowship. When Pastor Walker get back, we're going to let him know that he has a new member. Amen. Now, we want you to... <laughs> now, I want you to sing. I want you to keep coming. I want you to be faithful. All right, fill that card out and give it back to us. I want you to be faithful. Keep on coming. If you don't know when we have services, we the ushers have programs back there that have all of our services on there. All right? God bless you, daughter. Say amen, fellas. Cheers as you come. Some of you ladies, come and greet her. Come and greet her. Welcome.